Okay, uh, hi everyone. I'm uh, Stephen Kirodi, the CTO of uh, Cyborg Angel. So, uh, Cyborg Angel is a uh, startup company founded in 2013 uh, in Paris, and uh, we specialize in uh, data leaks detection. Actually, we apply big data, big data techniques to tackle the problem of uh, data leaks uh, detection on the internet. But today I'm going to talk about uh, another problem, major one, which is a counterfeiting, and more precisely, online counterfeiting, and a solution we have found uh, using data techniques to fight this um, uh, counterfeiting uh, problem, and online counterfeiting. So, uh, counterfeiting is a serious business. It's a big business, it's, uh, it represents uh, one trillion dollars uh, of market value, and it uh, represents 5% of uh, all consumer goods uh, traded worldwide. Uh, it's a major loss for uh, legitimate businesses. Worldwide, it represents $500 billion of loss. It's also a loss for governments, uh, because uh, counterfeiters don't like to pay taxes, and it's also a loss for citizens worldwide because it accounts for 2.5 million uh, lost jobs. Uh, you probably already know what is counterfeiting. Here are some examples, and what's interesting is uh, that all industries are concerned. It ranges from uh, luxury, like the nice watches, handbags, to retail with these uh, pretty nice Nike shoes, and also uh, pharmacy with the famous blue pill. Uh, you can see that very often the, it's very hard to distinguish the fake from the real. So, first question, how do you find counterfeit goods? Pretty easy. You can do it the old school way, just run into the streets. Uh, here, this photo has been taken in uh, Roma, Italy. And it's uh, famous that uh, if you go hang out in the streets of Roma, you will be able to find some pretty nice looking handbags at an affordable price. But you can also use uh, technology. Uh, you all, do, all know how to use a search engine. You can fire up Google and look for counterfeit Rolex online. You will find some uh, legit uh, websites and also websites selling replica and fake watches like this uh, Perfect Watches website. Here at the bottom left uh, of the Perfect Watches website, you can buy a Rolex Oyster watch for 230 euros. And on the left, you can see that the real price is uh, 3,000 euros. So that's a 90% discount, which is a pretty, pretty good deal. Uh, you can also do it the legal, the boring way. It's... Um, Everybody who does business online needs to register a website. When you register a website through a company that is called a registrar, like GoDaddy or OVH in France, uh, you need to buy a domain name. And when you have a domain name, you need to associate it to an IP address because you will host your website uh, on a server which has an IP address. And all these registrars, like GoDaddy, have a list of all the domain names that are registered every day and uh, you can fetch these uh, files. These are called zone files and they uh, list all the domain names and their associated IP address. So uh, some uh, companies that are fighting counterfeiting do download these zone files from registrars and have an exhaustive look at all of them. It's a very tedious work and it's not very efficient. It's not very efficient because uh, it requires a lot of manpower, so a lot of time and a lot of money, and also because you have a very narrow scope because uh, registrars are in charge of a uh, region, usually of a um, uh, top level domain. So you will have the French registrar in charge of all the .fr domain names. You will have the registrar in charge of uh, the .de for Germany and for .com.org. And the problem is that not all registrars want to share this information. Uh, for example, uh, the Chinese and the Russian ones do not want you to download the zone files. You are totally blind in these countries. So it does work, but it costs a lot of time and money, and um, you don't see the whole problem. 
So we have uh, thought about a way to tackle this problem uh, using uh, big data and uh, network science. We want to find uh, a way to automatize this, um, uh, this uh, search for counterfeiting uh, for counterfeiters and also to optimize their takedown efforts. The takedown is the action you take when you have found a counterfeiter. You try to take down, which means shut down the website. And ideally, the main goal at the end is to take down the whole business, the whole counterfeiting business behind the website. So uh, the whole research we did is based on the data called uh, DNS. DNS is the, the domain name system, is the system which is at the very basis of the internet. The internet is based on this domain name system. And we call, uh, we use a special kind of data which is called passive DNS. So I will explain what it is. DNS is used by everybody worldwide. Everybody, even if you don't even know what is DNS, you use it. You use it hundreds of times every day. Uh, and you use it, every single device that is connected to the internet uses it. From your laptop to your smartphone. Let's say you want to read the New York Times, you will type, type uh, newyorktimes.com in the uh, address bar of your browser. And uh, what it will do, it's that uh, the browser needs to know which IP address to contact to fetch the homepage of the New York Times. So it will ask a special kind of server, which is called a DNS server, for the um, corresponding IP address. This is the blue cloud. Um, usually, this uh, I DNS server is uh, hosted by your ISP because uh, it's close to you, so it's a fast query and you can get the answer very quickly. The ISP would be like in France, Orange or Free or Bouygues or SFR. But they do not know the answer for every uh, website in the world. So sometimes, if they do not know, they will ask an authority server. The authority servers, there are only 13 of them on the internet. They have an uh, answer to everything. And um, this is where it gets interesting because um, this, we have, for this research, we have partnered with a company specialized in passive DNS. And passive DNS is the data which is between the blue cloud and the orange cloud. So, our partner have put sensors on ISP servers that monitor the DNS queries that are being made, made worldwide. These are called cache misses. It's when your laptop asks the ISP DNS server for the IP corresponding to the New York Times. If your ISP does not know, because the answer is not in its cache, it's called a cache miss, and your ISP asks the authority server. It triggers the sensor, and this information is sent to our partner. It's very important to note that there, at this stage, there is no uh, personal information. Uh, we do not know who is the uh, person who asked the website at first. So, you understand that DNS is a very important word here, and everybody uses it in worldwide. Every device, every single device connected to the internet uses it hundreds of times every day. That's a lot of data. And within data relies intelligence and we will, we need to find a process to extract this intelligence from this data. And when I say it's a lot of data, with passive DNS, we process 20 billion records every day. So, now I will show you the research we did on how to extract information and intelligence from this raw data, which is passive DNS, and to use it to optimize the takedown efforts for counterfeiting websites. This is the process we have designed. It's a multi-stage process we start from raw passive DNS, the data I showed earlier. First, we need to filter it because you have seen it's a lot of data. So we need to filter it to only focus on the relevant pieces. 
Then we will run some feature extraction to extract the, ver the relevant features from all the websites that are interesting. And after that, we will run some clustering algorithms in order to draw a very nice and neat visualization which will uh, help us optimize the takedown. So I will go through the process and at the end we will study a use case. First, stage one, we subscribe to the passive DNS data stream. That's how it looks. You can picture it like a JSON file, just that it has an infinite length because it's a stream. And every single record in this file looks like this. You have the uh, domain name that is being queried, here that would be cyberangel.com, and you have the IP address that it has resolved to, 91.xxx. You have also some extra information, like the first time and the last time uh, the sensors have seen this query. And a very important information, which is the count, the first one. The count is, let's say, an indicator of uh, the popularity of the website. It tells you how many times this um, website has been queried to the DNS server, so somehow it's correlated to the popularity of the domain. So for example, cyberangel.com will have a much lower count than google.com, but we are working on it. So um, we subscribe to this passive DNS data stream and we receive 5,000 um, records every second. They are called resource record sets. Stage two, we need to filter this stream. That's too much data. First, we have two different approaches. We have the perfect matching and the fuzzy matching. The perfect matching is pretty easy. We look for um, a sequence of uh, characters in the domain names. Let's say I want to tackle some um, luxury kind of features. So I will look for some generic keywords like replica watch. And I will also, if my client is uh, Rolex or Chanel, I will also look for the brand specific keywords, obviously. So if the domain name um, is made of the sequence Rolex or Chanel, that rings a bell and it sounds like an interesting domain to investigate. We also do fuzzy matching. Fuzzy matching is also called approximate matching, is uh, when you try to match different variations of a word. Let's say my keyword is cyborg angel, spelled that way. I want to match if the domain is spelled with an S or with an L, or with two L, or with a one instead of an L. All these uh, common variations that are used by the, um, the kind of feeders to, draw, uh, to drive much more traffic to their websites. Fuzzy matching is a, algorithm, algorithmically speaking, is a very difficult problem. It's very time consuming and uh, it requires a lot of uh, power. Especially when we do it at this scale of 5,000 records per second, we only have 200 microseconds to match all, so it's the thousands of keywords we have in our database, we only have 200 microseconds to match it against the domain name. So this is the end of the filtering stage. At the beginning we had 5,000 uh, records per second. By filtering it, with the two approaches we saw, we managed to fil filter it, it down to 50 domains per second, which is much more handable for uh, crawlers, for the crawlers we have. So now we launch the automatic crawlers on all these websites. And we start the feature extraction. So the crawlers go on the website and they try to extract as much uh, relevant information as possible. The kind of feeders are businessmen. So they do business, and when you do business, you do marketing. When you do marketing, you use Google Analytics. So they all have Google Analytics, or similar ones, and the crawlers try to extract automatically the analytics ID they use. Or at the top, you have the add this, the famous button to share some information. We also look for um, identifi identifying information like phone numbers we can find in the body of the website, 
email addresses. We also do some who is lookup where there are some interesting information like uh, names, first name, last name, some um, phone numbers and email addresses. And they are very often different than the phone numbers and email addresses you have on the website. So it allows us to do some correlation, which is very relevant for our problem. We also, and that's, this is gold, it's the banking ID. The crawlers are able to automatically find the banking ID used by the counterfeiters. So what does it do? The robot, when it sees um, online market selling, let's say, counterfeit Rolex watch, it will try to buy one. It will start the payment process. It will start filling in all the data, fake data, obviously, because I don't know Natalie Portman myself. And it will go through all the payment process, but it will stop at the end and we do not give any money to counterfeiters, obviously. This allows us sometimes, like here, to find uh, what we call the banking ID. So here, the PayPal account belongs to WhiteGates8316. And that's very important information because this is the money bag where when you buy something on the website, the money goes there. What do we do next? We have a lot of features. With features, you can do machine learning. We like to do clustering. Why do we do clustering? It's not because we do research and we just want to have fun. We do clustering because it's a, a relevant solution to optimize the takedown efforts. How do we want to do that? We have thousands of websites at the end of the month. We cannot go give our client the thousands of websites selling counterfeited version of the, the, their goods. So we want to present these thousands of websites in a clustered way, where the clusters represent a same, the same actor, the same uh, organization selling these kind of fit goods. We want one cluster to represent one organization. That's very important because one organization can administrate dozens, hundreds, or thousands of websites. When you take one down, they put another one up within seconds. So we have all these websites with all the features. We put them in a graph. Here we will run the clustering algorithm of, uh, using network specialization with Force Atlas 2. We run the algorithm, and you can start seeing some clusters. Then we also uh, can correlate the visualization, so the clusters, with the count I told you earlier, which represents more or less the popularity of the websites. So you can guess which clusters are more popular than the others, and you can know where to target your efforts first. So here you can see that, for example, the first one, shop24.ru, drives as much traffic as perfumeram.ru because it has about the same traffic, but Perfumeram has 100 websites in its cluster. Okay, that was the research we designed, the process we designed with this research. Now let's uh, study a concrete case. Let's say I want to buy a cheap luxury watch. Uh, but um, I don't have much money, so we'll look for a kind of fit version of it. And uh, I like the Panther of Cartier, so I will look for a Cartier watch. I subscribe to the passive DNS data stream. I receive a lot of records, which are DNS queries seen worldwide. And I look for the brand specific keywords. Here, that would be Cartier. And I also look for the generic keywords, like watches. It allows me to set apart uh, 50,000 websites every day. These websites are crawled automatically by my crawlers. First, they will start the filtering process. So they will fetch the homepage of the website. And they will look if the website sells a kind of 
counterfeit version of the good I'm looking for. Here, they do sell watches. It's pretty obvious, it's in the name. And they have also Cartier watches. Hmm, that's interesting. So the crawler sees that and it goes deeper and starts the feature extraction stage. It looks for all the phone numbers that are in the web page. It also looks for all the analytics IDs. Here you have the Google Analytics. And we put all that in a graph. So here is the 50,000 uh, websites we can see in one day. And the perfect watches.cn, our, Chi our Chinese friend, is right there at the end of the arrow. You cannot really see it. So let's zoom in a little bit. If we zoom in, we can see that the website we are interested in is part of a subgraph. It's a uh, um, connected component within the graph. And all the pink dots represent a website. You can see that they are all connected. And you can also see that there is a central point in this graph, the red dot. If I zoom in again, what do I find? I find my Chinese friend here, perfectwatches.cn, and I see the central point. What is this central point? You can see that it's an ID ending with B39C. And if you go back, you can see that's the analytics ID. So what does that mean? It means that these, these dozens of websites are all administrated by the same guy, the owner of this analytics ID. The old school approach, the legal one, or the boring one as I called it earlier, would have found perfectwatches.cn, obviously. And it would have reported it to the client, and the client would have taken down perfectwatches.cn. But the next day, Watches Inc. or Replique de Montre, or Luxury Replica Ro Rolex, would have popped up, and all the efforts would have been vain. So what you need to do here is take a step back, look at the whole graph, and target the red dot. So instead of uh, asking the Chinese registrar for the owner of perfectwatches.cn, you will go go to Google and ask who is the owner of this, anal of this analytics ID. And this way, you can take down these dozens of websites. It's like 20 birds, one stone. That's it. So we've seen that counterfeiting is a major problem. It's not a new one. It's been here for ages. But still, the current solutions are inefficient. So we try to use to design an approach to use the power of big data to tackle this problem in a new fashion, which is much more efficient, will save a lot of money, and also will save jobs. Thank you.